Hi everyone, it's been a while since I made a YouTube video and today I will be sharing my experience of the COIL program. COIL stands for Collaborative Online International Learning and this semester I had the opportunity to meet students from University of Technology Sydney to discuss about our countries and one of the sustainable development goals that our countries are focusing on. We were put together in one group, two students from Universitas Indonesia, which are myself and Faye, and two students from UTS, Gia, and Sierra. Because I am publishing this video to the public, the names I mentioned earlier are fake names to protect the identity of the real people. We had two meetings, one to get to know each other and the second meeting was to talk about our research about the SDG that we already chose. So in the first week, we met via Google Meets and it was very awkward at first, but uh, one of the members of our group, Gia, she's very talkative, so it didn't take us forever to talk casually. And we talked about our interest, about ourselves, and also what we think about education in Indonesia and in Australia. So Gia was the first person to introduce herself. She has a Chinese background and she majored in communications at UTS and she's currently in her second year. In her free time, she loves to play badminton, watches anime, and she also has interest in Korean music. She also told us that she works on the weekends and also the standard working hours in Australia is 9 to 5. And she shares about the working and education culture in Australia. She said that education is expensive and there are two top universities in Australia. One is Sydney University and the second one is the University of Melbourne. And the best majors in UTS, according to her, are business, law and engineering. Since education in Australia is expensive, many people choose to work rather than college. I also shared something about myself, like my love for rom-com films and I like watching movies and playing The Sims 4 during my free time. And I shared that uh, the previous semester I worked as a social media marketing intern and I told them that I uh, like it but also it's very exhausting because they made you work on holidays and weekends. So Faye also shared her routine. She naps, reads, and scrolls social media on her free time. And she also said that she has interest in K-pop, specifically BTS. And that's when me, Gia, and Faye were kind of like started talking casually because the three of us actually knows BTS and likes their music. And when talking about BTS, Sierra told us that she never listens to K-pop and the three of us recommended her to listen to BTS. And last but not least, Sierra shared about herself as well. She's actually a German living in Perth and she loves food but not sport. Sierra usually catches up with her friends or saving up money for traveling and she has German and Iranian blood and she actually got COVID when we were meeting for the first time. She also majored in business administration and mainly shared about her experiences in Germany and its education. For instance, education in Australia is more expensive than in Germany. Still, she chose Australia um, as her place for education because she loves Australia and she wants to um, improve her English. In Germany, the government covered all school tuition and which is very interesting to me because oh, it must be nice living in Germany and having the government cover your tuition expenses. Uh, because we talk so much about education, we chose the fourth SDG, which is quality education, as our topic for research and we will discuss it in the following meeting. For our second and last meeting, we met up via Zoom, but we switched to Google Meets at some point. We also prepared a presentation about education in our respective country. Gia started the presentation first, and I must say it's very interesting. And because I thought education in developed countries are pretty much settled and there's no major mishaps whatsoever, but after Gia's presentation, my perspective changed. 
Gia said that because Australia is near the United Kingdom and the United States, not geographically but historically, it is pretty privileged. Education is very important in Australia and its focus is what you want to do after school and not what you want to learn. And that is why Australians are directed to learn business and the educators there teach less humanities. Education is also very valuable because it's an asset for high-level paying jobs such as lawyer, journalist, medical worker, and more. However, minimum paying jobs in Australia such as marketing, construction, advertising, they do not really require one to have a degree because it is more flexible. It kind of surprised me because here in Indonesia, you need to have a related degree if you wanted to uh, sign up for marketing jobs. And when I asked that question to Gia, she said that marketing is more flexible in Australia because people in the city can have access to social media and also teachers in schools actually teach us social media. Though marketing related jobs are pretty much flexible there, a marketing degree is still pretty desirable in Australia. Another good thing about education in Australia is that education from primary to high school is entirely free and public school people can voluntarily donate um, but it's not compulsory. However, private schools in Australia that mostly are Catholic or independent are very expensive and very exclusive. Still, of course, they have better education and teachers. There is a large gap between public and private schools and also the gap between the white Australian and the indigenous people. Sustainable development goals are crucial to ensure that everybody receives the same education. Just like Indonesia, Australia is a multicultural country, but only white Australians are financially stable. There is a narrow gap for social mobilization, hence the rich will always be richer and the poor will stay poor. There is a gap in graduation rate between Australians and native Australians. Generally, Australians have 89 to 95% graduation rate and girls graduate more. Meanwhile, the graduation rate for indigenous people is only 51%, which needs improvement. When it comes to education for indigenous Australians, they tend to choose online classes. Still, it is not well organized because there can be students of different ages in one class. Another information is that pure blood tend to live in the outback. Meanwhile, those who are half-bloods or mixed live in the city. They do have schools in the outback, but it's not much and not that good. Gia said that there is less racism towards minorities in Australia, but there is not enough representation of indigenous people. So most people know indigenous Australians through formal education in school. And another interesting point is that rich white people still actually look down on indigenous Australians. This is because indigenous people don't have as much money for housing and there are higher numbers of crimes among them. Based on my further research, indigenous Australians are portrayed negatively and stereotyped such as that they are violent, alcoholic, and lazy. Thea concluded her presentation with a solution to close the education gap in Australia, and that is that the government should do more thorough research on rural areas, and they also should add programs for teachers to go to secluded locations. After Gia's presentation on education in Australia, Faye and I presented our research. Currently, Indonesia ranks 54 fifth out of 73 countries in the education sector, which is a significant improvement. People with low economic status tend to prioritize work over education because they believe that working can produce money, but studying spends money. Aside from tuition, additional expenses like uniform or transportation fees makes it difficult for them to study. In terms of distribution, education in Indonesia has begun to be evenly distributed. But 
The lack of human resources makes it hard for students to have good education. Another issue is the quality of education. In a 2018 survey conducted by PISA, Indonesia placed 68 out of 75 countries in reading, science, and math. The main goal of SDG in Indonesia is to distribute good quality teachers because low quality teachers means low quality outcomes for students. Teachers nowadays lack good education and pedagogical skills, and it's hard to distinguish between teachers who are genuinely passionate about teaching or just eyeing the allowance because being a government worker has many benefits for the future. From our observation, people in Indonesia support the improvement of education quality, but some adjustments are still heavily criticized. For instance, in the past, public, middle, and high school admissions used national test scores. However, the national test, or Ujian Nasional, or UN, was terminated because of the pandemic. Today, school admission is based on the region and this makes it difficult for students who want to get into the good schools but have low chance of getting in because of their domicile. So the solution that Faye and I came up with is to increase the quality of teachers. Teachers must have an excellent education background and teaching skills. There needs to be a strict measurement tool to identify stellar teachers. Last but not least, Sierra also shares about education in Germany. There, education is a basic human right and everyone should go to school. As mentioned earlier, the German government covers all primary to post-secondary tuition. That's so nice to hear because that means the government truly cares about education. Another interesting information that Sierra shared is about the reputation of private schools in Germany. Private schools have a bad reputation because there's this perception, something like, how stupid are you to the point that you can't even study in public schools? Private schools in Germany are very, very expensive, but students can apply for scholarships. In Scandinavian countries, the people really care about the quality of education, and usually there are three teachers in one class, and each class consists of less than 20 students to ensure that children can slowly adapt to new information. The main educational issue in Germany today is taking refugees to academic institutions. In Germany, there are more older people than younger ones. Hence, the government allows immigrants and recently, Germany has taken in many Ukrainian refugees. Based on an article in Reuters posted on May 14, 2022, more than 700,000 Ukrainians fled to Germany and registered in the Germany Central Register of Foreigners, or AZR. Refugee students can also go to school for free and receive the same education as others. Sierra shared that when it comes to media representation, the right parties in Germany, famous for their rejection of refugee students, constantly reject the idea. But most people are elated because refugee students help to increase the number of German students. There are three solutions that Sierra gave for the issue that she mentioned. The first is to invest more money in education because the numbers of students continue to increase and some things in German education culture are getting old. The second is to minimize the social gap because schools in poverty areas have less numbers of good teachers. And the last solution is to invest more money to cater to all students. It's pretty much all the information that I could give from this program. I hope that in the future, the international students will be given the same tasks as us who are from Indonesian universities, at least in my study program and in my university. I noticed that the international students were not required to make notes or submit tasks for meeting, which seems a bit unfair for me, but <laughs> hey, what's past is past, right? Overall, this COIL program gave me new experiences and certainly new knowledge about the world outside Indonesia, and I get to meet new people and learn new things from them. So 
that is all from this video thank you so much for watching and see you soon